to. Everything Are you there, Tom? Yeah, everything he's here. <laughs> I just lost You're that monitor, show. though, Joan. I'm gonna turn. This is the white one, right? Yeah, but Jim, yeah. we're live, Jim. Oh, uh, we are. Jim. Yeah, we're live. Okay, we just lost our <laughs> our video signal, Tom. So it's okay. Um, hopefully, we'll get it back here. But uh, you can hear me okay, and you can see me okay. Yeah, you can't see us. Uh, not right now. We uh, lost one of the monitors for whatever reason. Okay. Um, let's um, let's see if other people can can. I think other people can see you, so you and I can just talk for a little bit, and then you can come out and come back in. And all righty, sounds can. good. Or you want to try that right now? You want? To... Uh, yeah, we just did. It didn't do anything, but I, I I'm okay like this. Okay. All right. You can't see me making funny faces at you. <laughs> no, no, I can't. Um, <laughs> Yeah, never a dull moment. <laughs> so we are going to tie a size 14 beadhead pheasant tail, right? Flashback. Flashback. Yeah. And we gave pe we gave people the recipe, but I warned them that one or both of us might go off the reservation. So yeah, um, I, I'm I'm tying my own version. And I'm tying my own version. So my, yeah. my pretty standard though for an American pheasant tail. Um, yeah. Not not too much deviation. Well, mine's better. Okay. I'm sure it is, Tom. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? You guys, you guys have to vote for me because if you don't vote for me, you're not getting any more fly tying next week. So, oh man, that's tough. Well, you know, you already have. You already have a huge hand. I already have a handicap because you've got a fancy camera with a switcheroo deal and I'm dealing with an iPhone here and yeah. you do this all the time. And I'm just a babe in the woods at this video fly time. <laughs> so I'm already coming in this with a big handicap. Yeah. But I, I can't even see what you look like because my monitor's out, but we'll, we'll, we'll just go with it, Tom. <laughs> so how do we proceed? What do, what do we do? Well, we, we talk and, and um, we answer some questions first and um, and then and then we'll both start tying and we'll tie side by side and people will be able to watch. You know, I think we should probably uh, like both do the tail and then pause if one of us and then both put in the rib and whatever so that people can so people can see it side by side or maybe we should do it. Yeah, let's do it. To, let's do it. To, at yeah, that that's that, that sounds great. Yeah, so people can see the differences in style and um, you know how we want like to tie this um, this pheasant tail nymph. Yeah, yeah, because I I know for me I've changed quite a bit over the years. You know, it's it's basically the same fly, but I've uh, changed little techniques here and there, and um, I think some are good, some are bad, but. Are the techniques are the techniques because um, because of, of fish catching reasons and um, experience from the field, or are they just shortcuts and and things that you do while tying? I I think uh, the latter. Uh, so shortcuts, things I do tying. You know, the, my tying has changed. I've gotten better over the years. There there are things that I can do that I couldn't do before. Also materials. Yeah. I mean, for a while I was having a lot of trouble getting pheasant tail fibers that were a, a decent length. And so um, <clears throat> like I, I, I'd, I'd use different fibers for my tail than I would for the body. And now, yeah, uh, me too. Yeah. yeah. Now I have fibers that are long enough that they can be both the tail and wrap for the body. So saves a step there. And then I've also messed around heavily with the, um, uh, with peacock curl for for the thorax for the American yeah. pheasant tail, and right. you know different ways to make it more durable and and things like that. And um, I've arrived at a pretty simple solution now as compared to most people. It, it's really just super glue uh, beneath them, and it, it's enough to to hold them together. So, uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, and then a few different well, things. You, you need you need glue. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I can. Oh, actually, I can see you now. So, um, oh, you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we gotta provide some entertainment for people here. Yeah. We gotta talk some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
we got to have some we got to have some fun with this. I, mean, yeah. I know I'm going to I know I'm going to lose already. Uh no. I, I know I know I'm going to lose, so I'm, you know, let's just have just just have fun with it. Yeah. I'm a little nervous so I got to admit. I I've never kind I know, of No, I can tell. I've I never gone like head to head with in a competition before. It's I can um, tell you're nervous. I yeah. can tell you're not you're not your usual self. Come on. I know. Up. Get Joan to loosen you up. Joan, hit him <laughs> over the hit him on the back of the head a couple times or something. Loosen him up. Give him a glass of wine or something. Uh, yeah, grab him a beer. Yeah, yeah we're we're good. So, I wonder I wonder if we have any questions because I can't see the questions on my phone. What James the... James Taylor, what makes the pheasant Pheasant, fe black back pheasant tail is so effective. Uh, it's a great question. Yeah. And actually, um, I just did a size 18 pheasant tail for my uh, YouTube tying video for the week, which was up on Orbis. Uh, yeah, yeah, today. Um, yeah. Anyway, with the size 18 is one of my favorite, favorite flies that it's just, it's yeah. the right size. I tie it without a bead, with, without any weight. Um, and I usually fish it along with this weighted version. So the the two together, uh, one to get mm -hmm. everything down and the other to look real natural. But yeah. one of the things, uh, I could be totally wrong here on the pheasant tail, is the pheasant tail fibers themselves, particularly when you wrap the abdomen of the fly, those little fibers sticking out look so much like gills on a mayfly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Also, yeah. just the, the color of natural pheasant tail. If you pick up a rock in the stream and just look and you, you see nymphs on the bottom, kind of irregardless of species, um, they kind of look like a pheasant tail nymph more than they would yeah. say a, a hare's ear or anything else. And yeah, I think I yeah. think that's some of it. Um, yeah, there's it's, there's something magical about it. And, and there isn't any other material that has... The, those subtleties i mean especially for smaller flies it, you just get that fuzziness without without being overt you know yep yeah and you get the the on the uh on the fibers the the fine points on them too that that really do come to a point um yeah and you know i i know some people like when they get to the legs they'll particularly on the smaller flies they'll snip the legs off to length and so they're truncated. And I, I'd love to, I really want to be able to do that because it's just so much faster, but I just can't, can't, I don't have confidence in the flies when I tie them like that. And uh, yeah, they look ugly. I don't put legs on mine. So as you'll yeah. see, so. Well, so the, be, the legs to me are the hardest part. I mean, re really yeah. and truly get it, getting the legs the, the correct length and having the tips intact and and then having them oriented correctly, you, you'll see. I'm. I'll, it'll probably take me 20 minutes to get my legs on today. So, um, yeah. but you, um, you, everybody needs to wait for it. Ted, Ted's uh, <laughs> Ted's got a question: Is pheasant tail different from wild versus domestic bird? Um, uh, no. Good, good. Yeah, it's a good question though because. Um, oh, go ahead, Tom. You answer this one. Well, it, it needs to come from a big old rooster pheasant, um, ringneck pheasant. And, you know, the bigger the bird, the better, because then you get longer fibers and you get those center tails with enough pheasant tail on both sides of the feather. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of padded things today just to be sure. I don't know whether you guys can see this. But yeah. Ooh, this is <laughs> These guys, uh, a friend of mine um, does remarkable work um, uh, with bird skins and feathers. And so, uh, I'm real lucky to get this. I mean, the stuff you get commercially is okay, but just that extra like quarter inch length on the fibers, uh, on some flies is just enough to, to get you through it. And so, yeah, feathers like this are few and far between. Yeah. If you know a pheasant hunter or you, or you're near a game farm or a preserve, um, you can get, you know, you can get those tails for free and yeah. you can pick through and get good ones. Um, Spencer wants to know what's your go-to method for getting non-beaded nymphs down deep? Um, you, you need something that has weight is for, you know, um, unless you're drop shotting, I don't know how many people are familiar with drop shotting on here. Um, but it, it's kind of common in your nymphing where you're, you're using weight, uh, below both flies, which works great. 
Um, you can also, I mean, you can put a split shot between two unweighted flies, but you you do have to get some some weight somewhere in the system to get get your rig down to where the fish are. Um, yeah, most of the time. If you want, if you want to do it without weight, you can try. It doesn't always work in really fast water, but you can try a, a very light tip. The lighter your tip, it the the better that fly is going to sink, and then tuck cast it, drive that yeah, drive that um, fly down in the water, and fish straight upstream. I mean, that'll that'll help too. The more yeah. you any a- angle you have on the current is going to is going to rise that fly up. So fishing straight upstream will get your fly deeper. But it's it's not easy. Hanging hanging off a heavily weighted nymph is what yeah. I do. Yeah, it's it, it's probably the easiest way to do it. And uh but I do. I I really like to to fish a weightless fly in the system. I I just from watching you know bugs in in fish tanks and watching the way my flies actually behave underwater, a fly that has weight in it is just kind of dead. It doesn't look natural. And the closer you can get to neutrally buoyant, I think the better looking the pattern really is. So, um, uh, Chris, you can tie this on, on a jig hook if you want. No, no problem there. Uh, I personally like a pheasant tail on a non-jig hook, a standard nymph hook just like the looks of it and i like the profile of it but you you can tie it on a jig hook no problem you you agree tim i i i do and uh, and you know the pheasant tail is one that i really i i use a ton of jig hooks i i really do i mean for just about everything nowadays um you know with the tungsten bead and but the pheasant tail is one that i keep just sort of like i'm going to tie here today uh on, mm. on a regular hook uh, i i yep. can't can't tell you exactly why but um always yeah. have any tips for durability on pt tail seem to break off quickly so i've resorted to partridge or some other feather the tails are going to break jonathan um you know ribbing it ribbing it with wire uh twisting it around some th- tying thread can help but the tails are going to break yeah you know, you're you're going to lose it bef- before most of that happens, yeah so and mine, like you, you'll see when I tie in on, on this size 14, um, I tie in six fibers for the tail that also get wrapped as the abdomen. But but it's I, I'd say it's six um, or three to three to use and three to lose is the deal on the tail. So oh, I do it the same way. You mean we're we're going to do something the same? Uh, I gosh, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like what, we are. What what if we tied exactly? Well, you don't tie legs, so that's that's a big difference. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna hide my bead, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use only a little sliver of flash. So, and I'm gonna use a black bead. So, well, it's gonna be different. Now, don't you start don't you start <laughs> changing your pattern now. <laughs> Hold on a second, don't, Tom. <laughs> don't, don't give many other materials. <laughs> Actually, you're you're the one that got me a couple years ago during a podcast uh, on the black beads, and uh, I curse you, Tom Rosenbauer, because uh, I I went, once you said that you like the black beads, the dark beads better than gold. Now I go to put on a fly with a gold bead, and I go, oh, freaking Rosenbauer, damn it! And, but they and still so, work. Yeah, I'm I'm work. I'm on the black beads now. Oops, in a big way. Um, <laughs> sorry, a little little equipment failure there. So yeah, my the pheasant tail I'm going to tie is going to be is going to be much more subtle than your brash American version. <laughs> Mine is going to look more like an English version. You know, Frank Sawyer meant this fly to be slim uh... and to sink <laughs> quickly, and I. I, you know, even though I've I bastardized Frank Sawyer's pattern, it's going to be more in the, along the philosophy of what a pheasant tail should be than your Al Troth American Rocky Ooh. Mountain. <laughs> we we, we use, prefer we call it a American word? pheasant tail, American. Can you American? <laughs> can you? Can you use the weighted as a point fly and unweighted as a dropper? Absolutely. Or you can yeah. use, or you can hang the unweighted fly. Um, if you're tying to the to the hook band, you can put the unweighted fly below the weighted fly too. So yes, you can. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's why I do. That's the way I do it. And Tim, that's probably the way you do it, right? 
I can't I can't read that one that's behind the camera. Do you find that weighting your fly with the wire in the middle of the fly is more natural than using a bead? Does it travel more naturally through the water? I think we're getting a little geeky there. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, and I, I'm I actually I'm hope to do within the next couple of weeks one of the Orvis one minute things on um the tentative title for it is how's it hanging um and what it what it is is actually showing in a fish tank the way weighted versus unweighted flies um hang in in the water column off a tippet and the 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 deal here here guys is if it's on a j hook it almost always hangs vertically okay because you 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 have the the j of the hook is more mass and so it hangs vertically and um you know even jig hooks they're they're a little more horizontal but but um they're still tilted about like this so where you put the weight doesn't really matter on the fly it still wants to hang vertically in the water is is well, it doesn't Disappointing as that is for people to yeah. hear, it, it kind and of it actually doesn't. It actually doesn't matter because if you look underwater in the current in a trout stream, not in an aquarium, you'll see that those flies are tumbling. They're upside down. They're backwards. They're right side up. They're just tumbling through the current. They're not. They're not. You know. They're not riding the current like like the stylized drawings that you see. Um, yeah in the magazines i actually i all over the place i i have some video in and i show it at, at um, presentations and i i tell people they can't unsee it but it's video of a prince nymph a beadhead prince in fairly heavy tumbly water and mm -hmm. that thing is hanging absolutely vertically um no kidding no wow. kidding uh yeah it's really depressing footage to look at it, it's not what it's not what i envision and uh, but but that weight, unless it's really, really roiled water, though, just the weight of the bug really, really holds it down. Now, that that's another reason for tying nearly weightless flies is they have a much greater chance of moving around in the microcurrents than something that's weighted. Um, so, yeah, although I would I would argue that because your fly is attached to a tippet. Which is has some stiffness to it that putting weight on the fly may make the fly look more natural is one of one of the things because it's the weight of the fly is counteracting the effect of the tippet wow you talk about geeking out holy cow well yeah but you know i've had 50 years of thinking about this stuff. <laughs> so have you right? but but think about it think about it you've got yeah. it's attached to something how yeah. do you make it look unattached put more weight on it so that it has has a a, a little bit less um effect from being tied to something gotcha that's my theory anyways so i don't i don't um you know, I use unweighted flies, but I don't think they drift any more naturally in the current, honestly. Okay. But you know, who knows? We're we're never gonna we're never gonna solve this problem, right? I don't think. We're never gonna scientifically prove it. Yeah. Well, it's it's and and I've I've been trying for years. I, I have a couple shots like that, one of the Prince Nymph, but trying to get footage of flies underwater is, is one of the most difficult video things i've ever tried to oh, do yeah because in the current it's, yeah it's small it's underwater you're you're just and you're and it's, and it's moving, moving fast, fast. Yeah, yeah yeah um way faster than you'd think trying to keep up with it with a camera is very very difficult yeah and you know we worry so much about what our flies look like and then you put a you put a gopro or something underwater and you look at the footage later on and you see, even in slow water, how fast those nymphs drift by a trout. There's yeah. no way they can look them over that closely. Yeah. There's no way. Um, they're moving. Of course, what their brains might work. They're, what are the unique properties of pheasant fibers that make them so attractive to trout? Haven't we answered that already? We did. We covered that one. Yeah. The just okay, the... Sorry, Tim. Um, you, you'll have to go back and... Um, and must have come in late and, and watch yeah. the uh, watch the watch us in reruns. But don't Should we get tying, Tom? Yeah, we... let's tie. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a little I'm worried trying... about some battery life. So, oh, I'm trying to put this off so that. 
right. so am I, so, but <laughs> so all you have to do is press a switch. I have to go and readjust everything. So okay. Well, should I pre <laughs> pre should I press the switch and hope for the best here? Yeah, go ahead, because I'm gonna have to. Yeah, go ahead, press the switch and hope for the best. There, there it goes. Come on. Can you see it and can you hear me? Do we still have audio? Are you are you there? Yes, it's working. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm here. Whoo! I'm gonna I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move over here. I do have good light. I do have good light because this guy named named Tim Flagler gave me suggestions on <laughs> on on what uh wow that's actually nice. no actually I don't use the I use I use these bigger I don't use those for this the ones you recommended to me and people don't ask me what they are because I was sworn to secrecy. Top so secret. It's a it's a trade secret of Tim's and so I can't tell you Oh, look how far away I am, and look how close you are. This is not fair. This is this is really. I could zoom out a little if it makes you feel better, <laughs> no, Tom. <you> go right. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle it, Flagler. I can <laughs> handle it. All right. How are we doing, Julia? Everything okay? You guys are doing great. Look at All right. Well, Tom, are while you, you're are you ready? I'm ready. Why why don't while, while you're getting adjusted and stuff, should I run through what I have in the vice? Is that legit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um I have a in the vice. Let me get it focused a little bit. I have a falling mill 5085 um black nickel nymph hook in size 14. Nice barbless hook, and I've paired it with a Cyclops 764 7 inch uh, black nickel bead. Uh, for you guys out there, beads and hooks will drive you crazy, but one of the things I found is that if you're going middle of the road with beads and hooks, whether it's jig hooks or re regular hooks, a size 14 with a 764 inch bead is kind of the way to go. Really great combination together. You still there, Tom? Oh, yeah, I'm just I'm just adjusting here. I'm having a focus problem. I don't have a I don't have a fancy camera like like Flagler does. All right. Jesus, your fly looks better than mine. <laughs> I'm so jealous. All right. So I have a, a an Orvis uh, two, uh, two X long um, uh, nymph hook, standard nymph hook. And I have a who knows what size bead. That Might looks be like a 764s. Yeah, probably a 764s. I don't know. I don't. Those numbers confuse me. Um, I wish they. I wish everybody would do them in millimeters. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, that's. I, I just I I just eyeball my beads. You know, I don't I don't know what. I don't know what God that. Looks so bad i'm so <laughs> jealous all right so shall we start mr flagler oh i am i am using i am using um despite what i said in the pattern description i am using 12 o brown thread i love i love 12 o and i think this really fine 12 o thread gives you a big advantage and it's plenty strong enough for tying most flies um i wouldn't dub i wouldn't dub it with a loop are you still there tim i i am can you hear me yeah are, are you gonna start your thread or what yeah i i don't really need the crutch of 12 watt thread so i'm just using regular <laughs> Okay. Regular UTC yeah, seventy veneer in brown. Oh God! Oh, you're <laughs> gonna be sorry. <laughs> and then once I get my thread started and the tag trimmed off, I am gonna add some weight to this, and I go all the way back to the bead with my tying thread. 
Are you going to add weight, Tom? I'm not adding weight. I got a, I got a, I got a top secret thing to do. Okay. Well, I'm going to add some weight. So uh, here's, I here's. The... I don't. I, you're, you're adding weight so the bead doesn't slide, right? Yeah, and Mainly. just to add a little bit more weight. But here's a little trick. Again, it, this was on the Orvis one minute things, but I have. Um, this is 0.02 uh, lead-free wire. And rather than waste any wire, what I do is I take take the wire and shove it up into the bead, which helps stabilize it. And then I take nice tight wraps right there to hold the wire. But then I can go like this and just bring the wire around, wrap it. I'm leaving my tying thread hanging, so I'm wrapping behind my tying thread. And then just go, and then if you kind of wiggle it, I didn't really stabilize the bead too well on that, but it's a, just no, a, a I way to see that. I yeah, can see you didn't stabilize. I'm really disappointed in you for not stabilizing that bead. Dang it. Failure already. Now it's stabilized. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, that's it, you know that's fi that's fine for you. I don't I don't like that that crutch, but um, you know I, I'm gonna I, I got I got other ways to I got other ways to deal with that issue. Yes, Tom. <laughs> I I just like it because it doesn't it doesn't weigh it stabilizes the bead adds a little bit of weight and it doesn't waste any of the lead wire. I hated yeah. having those little quarter inch pieces all over my tying bench. Well, I'm not gonna waste any lead wire or not okay. toxic wire. And I'm I'm not going to have any pieces all over my bench, and my beat's going to be stabilized. So you'll see, you'll see. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in a little more then. Oh, you bastard! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that is not fair. <laughs> Me. Okay. Why uh, Why don't you Why don't you go for the I next? Am, step? I am I am suffering a big case of camera envy here. <laughs> go Go ahead with the next step, Tom. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to the bend, Tim. I bet you are too. Uh, not just yet for me, but. Oh, okay. I'm going to go back to the bend and get my tails ready. Okay. I'm going to. What are you, you going to do? I, this is where, um, and again, I've changed this over the years. Um, I'm using some small copper ultra wire. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to tie that in now. And what I do is I butt the wire against those wire wraps. Uh, kind of like Lennox Salmon Fly guys do, just to keep the taper. But here, I'm going to bind it directly to the near side of the hook, and this will come into play a little later. Um, and then I take wraps all the way back to the start of the hook bend. Oh, uh, yeah, I used to do it that way. <laughs> hey. When I was first starting out, I used to do it that way. <laughs> uh. All right, so I'm going to tie in my tails. Okay, go ahead. And um, I've got about you know half a dozen. I don't have a. I don't have great. I don't have as good a. You got the beautiful pheasant tail there. I like that. You don't have anything like that. No, no. This is. Oh, that's what mine looks like. <laughs> that's, a, that's my best one. <laughs> it still has tire marks on it. I know, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't hunt pheasants because I don't like to eat them, but I gotta, I gotta make some friends from some pheasant hunters. I think. All right. So, um, I'm gonna, I like the tails on my pheasant tail short, so I'm just going to make it. Yeah. Maybe like a third of a shank length. I just like them short. So I'm going to grab it and I'm only going to take three turns on top of that pheasant tail one and tight turns two three all in the same spot wow we do do it the same way yeah that's terrifying it is so i i'm pretty much going to do the same i've got six six fibers i i like to cut the little curlies off just because they tend to grab thread but uh-huh and with the tips aligned, and I, I too, I, I like the tails really short, just a little yeah. more than a hook gap in length. Yep. And I'm going to do yep. the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to do. You can, you know, you can see yours a lot better than mine. I'm just hey, going to do. Four, 
You took four reps. I took four reps, yes. You took four reps. Because I want the tails to stay on. All right. Now, I'm going to put my wire in very similar to you. Here's what I do. I hold the wire like this, and I pull back with my fingers. It's hard to do it with a camera. But I pull back, and I slide this wire in place until I get it in that pretty much that same place you had a little tough to get in here with this phone. And then I wind forward and give myself a little taper with the body, not much, but since I'm using 12, oh, I have to, so there's, there's so where I am. Okay. Yeah, we're in a similar place. Similar place, except I I go a little differently. I've already got my wire wrapped in, and I just I leave my tying thread right there and grab the fibers. You got to right. be real. You got to be real careful with that hook point and the fibers, yeah. or yeah. you're going to break one. But by wrapping behind the tying thread like this, the weight of pushing the bobbin up I helps hope you break you, a fiber. Oh, you really, you're, you're just waiting for me to break a fiber. Oh, you almost did. I was, but push, I was push. on the edge of my chair there. I was, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Ah. Pushing that thread up helps to keep all those fibers together. So one doesn't race out in front of the other. Yeah. And now when I get to my weight, I've the, just the nature of the fibers to me builds a little taper. I think you can see it in there. Mm-hmm. And so I just get to the edge of my wire and then snip those extra butts off close. Okay. Okay. So and I then do it, I do it differently. Let me wind my body here. I take one turn of, it's so hard to get in here with this camera. I take one turn and then I twist. I twist my fibers together and I twist them as I go. Interesting. So I don't, yeah, it's the same, same deal that you got with your, but I think it get by twisting the fibers, I think it gives them a little more strength by twisting them together. It gives you a slightly different look to the body, but you still get those fuzzies. Oh, I just can't get in there. All right. So we're about, we're at about the same point here. Okay. Okay. So for me, for, um, I do like to counter wrap that, that, uh, pheasant tail because it's pretty delicate back there. And right. it's why it's why I tied the wire on the near side of the hook. So when I yeah. go to take my first wrap, I'm not disturbing that tail. If it was on the far side, your first wrap is very likely to disturb the tail and crank it around, and it's just a pain. And I usually I go. See, I can see a turn of thread behind your body. Your your camera is so close that I can see that you uh, left an exposed turn of thread. Should I go back? <laughs> no, but they may, the judges may take points off for that. I, I'm not seeing it personally. See that I can see that's a problem. That's a problem with having such a good camera, Tim. Now it's gone. Anyway, here's, I, and you're going to yell at me for this one, but my trick, like if, if I go like this and the wire's coming over this way and I yeah. anchor, anchor it with my tying thread right. this it's gonna way. It's going to push it away. Right. It's, it's pushing push it, away. it away. So what I do yeah. is I use my wire to change direction of my thread wrap. So I've gone around the wire and now I do two counter wraps with my tying thread. But then I can use my wire to change the direction again back to normal. And I bring it back a little bit. And that way, when I go to helicopter the wire, everything stays nice and tight. Okay. Freaky right. little so, technique, but works for me. 
So mine's going to be totally different. I'm not going to counter wind because oh, no, no, because 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 I because when you twist it, you don't have to, right? Because it's together. And I like to take really tightly spaced turns in a pheasant tail. I use really fine wire. Is is that because small or, or extra small, Tom? I think it's ex. It's, I think it's extra small. Okay. It's very old. And then, Tim, here's where I go off reservation. So I'm going to wind some wire here. And then I am going to go around in front of the bead, out over the top, and then around back. It's hard to get in here. I don't have the working room I normally do. Can't get in there, there. So I've crossed the bead twice. And now I've got, not only have I got a little more weight there, but I have the bead secured and it's not gonna go anywhere. See that? Yeah. Totally held in place with the wire. And then I'm going to, I'm not going to helicopter. <gasps> and then I, and then I push that little nib over and then I fill this in a little bit with thread. So that's totally different, but I'm going to bury my bead and you're not. So that's, yeah, that's a difference. So I don't know if people can see that, but there's a cross of cross of wire over the top of that. And that'll hold. That'll keep that bead in place. You can put a drop of head cement on there now too, if you want. All right. Should I go with the flashback? That's my next. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot to. I always forget to put the flash in. Uh, yeah, I just. Um, I just lay. This is large. Um, yeah. Ooh. Op opalescent tinsel. Very, and I very lay that coarse. in there. One of the very things good. that I, uh, maybe it's just me, but I, I really, I, I like a nice long wing case on all my nymphs. It's, it's not yeah. half, half the shank length, but it's pretty close. And I, I think a longer one always looks a little better than a shorter one. Well, uh, you know, mo a lot of the most of the nymphs are almost half thorax and half abdomen. So yeah, and I, I I have video of you know sulfurs and Hendrickson's where it's it's more than halfway with the wing case yeah. coming back. Yeah. Um, so I think we're I think we're about the same proportion here too because my wing case is going to come all the way over the bead. So yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to tie in my flash, but I'm not going to be so coarse as you. Um, I'm going to, I don't lot, I see, I have a black bead. I don't want a lot of flash in this fly. The pheasant tail is a subtle fly. Well, it, the way I tie them anyways. And so I'm going to use a fine, small size pearlescent tinsel. If I can get it off the spool here. Yeah. Well, while you're fiddling with that, if, if you made a little, so, I'm gonna use, your... so, so you can see, I'm going to use much finer tinsel than Tim. I just want a little peak of a of a split in that wing case. Um, but I'm going to also um, use some pheasant tail for them. And you, you're you not going to use any pheasant tail, right? Right. I have these little tenders on my spools that make it very easy. Yeah, that, that would be too smart for me. I'm not as organized as you. And then so I'm just going to tie in my tinsel here kind of hold it on the near side and let it roll right to the top in the center because you will want this centered so there good enough bind that down and come back i got an idea tom yeah why don't why don't we take a a little break and answer a few questions and that'll give me a chance to switch camera batteries okay 
You want to do that? No, gonna... no, no, I don't. No? I know. I want you. I want you to run out of power right in the middle of this. <laughs> well, the thing is, you, yeah. you, you, you really can't switch back. So let's. We're we're doing okay. We're <laughs> we're forty minutes. We'll we'll okay. keep on tying. Nobody sees needs to see. My no, no, no. Before. You can do it. No, you you can do. It. We we should probably answer some questions now. Okay. Let let me see if I can get back to um, my my face. Okay. All right. There goes the switch. Come on. Yep. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Super. Yeah. All right. I'm going to change the battery on my other camera. Okay. You're going to... Julia, do we have any... Que I can't see questions because I'm on my phone. Do we have any... Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, is super gluing the thread base under the pheasant tail before wrapping it worth it? Hmm. I haven't tried that, Craig. Have you tried that, Tim? Can you still hear me? Yeah. In fact, um, one of the things that I'm going to do when I, um, where am I, Joan? Am I there? Here you are. There I am. Holy cow. Um, well, that's not too bad. Um, uh, one of the things I do on, I do it on the, the peacock curl. Uh-huh. I'll both you'll see in in the very next step I do it but to me with the with the pheasant tail and the counter wrap with the wire uh, I, I really don't worry about it that that counter wrap really works for me on the on the on the on the pheasant tail um, mm -hmm. okay yeah but you're you're right to be um, concerned Craig because pheasant tail is is a very delicate very delicate thing it's too bad yeah, he needs to come and, up with a synthetic pheasant tail. Yeah, and when when you like use it for a wing case, you really have to put some kind of coating on. If you're if you have that pheasant tail just as the, as the hump, you you need to put head cement or UV cure resin or something on it because it, it then it's really vulnerable. It just wants to go sprung. Um, yeah, yeah. Um. All right, let's keep answering questions. I'm going to switch this battery okay. out. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions that you can post for us, Julia? Parachutes, do they work better? Not on a nymph. <laughs> um, I, I have uh, I have a fly that I use, a parachute pheasant tail. Um, a dry fly, just pheasant tail body and a you know, parachute wing. And uh, Lou Dunn Hackle, it works pretty good. For black beads, Tom or Tim, do you for black matte or black nickel? To me, nickel looks better. But I'm yeah, not Nick, nickel for me is good too. I don't. I like the black. Black, you can see my bead. My bead is is very black. I don't like the black nickel. I like the black black. In fact, if I could get a matte black, um, I would use them. <clears throat> Yeah, they're they're I they're guys making the matte black now. They they look nice. Are Looks there? like a stealth fighter or something. Um, oh, yeah, ooh. yeah, yeah. Real There's, matte, um, no shine at all. Find some of those. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because to me, a bead is weight, and and I'm not looking for the I'm not looking for the sparkle. If I want a sparkle, I'll put a gold bead on or copper or something. Tim, what happened to the beard? We're all corn. In quarantine, looking like Grizzly Adams, and you look like a baby-faced Brad Pitt. <laughs> well, Brad thank Pitt. you. Oh, I get that man. a lot, you know. Sean, um, you need some glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I I grow my beard from October one till April one every year. Um, I've been letting it I because I've been going to Patagonia in April the last couple of years, so I I let it go until May, but um, but didn't go this year because of the pandemic and so beard came off april one any more tom which pt do you prefer english or american style well if you haven't figured it out by now ed <laughs> i like the english style but you know if i'm gonna if if i'm gonna use something that's broader and a little more um flattish shaped and you know, more like a March Brown or a Stonefly type, um, I, I'll use another fly. But if I'm imitating a little sulfur or blueing olive nymph, or if there's a lot of those skinny little nymphs around, 
then I'll use a pheasant tail. I don't want a lot of bulk in it. So um, that's just the way I use the pheasant tail, you know. I make a dubbing noodle with wire and peacock curl. Is that bad? Sounds good. No, a lot, a lot of people do it that way uh, with either wire or with their thread. Um, and uh, I, I did it that way for a long time. And and you, you guys will see the, the way I do it now, the, the peacock curl is a little vulnerable, but it, it's fast that, you know, that that's why. And, uh, and you, you, I'm always doing that kind of weighing speed of tying versus durability and, and, you know. Yeah. Is, and your, I, I think, is your battery switched? Are you ready to go back to time? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I hope. Um, okay. so, so we switch back to the flies. Yeah. Come on, baby. Oh, God. Oh, I got a little fuzzy on there. A I'm just going to polish that black nickel up a little bit just to make it nice and shiny. Oh. We I'm ready to go, Tom? Black. Yeah, I'm I'm just cutting my wing case cuz I am I'm uh I'm using pheasant tail. Okay. And well, I'm the flash. I'm about to do my legs. Okay. So I'm going to put my wing case in. I've got about, I don't know, eight pheasant tail fibers, and I'm going to tie them in with very tight turns right there because I'm going to also wind this for the thorax, so I want to um, make sure they're tight. So I'll let you go ahead and tie in your pearl, Tim. Okay. Well, actually, I'm going to tie in these um, the pheasant tail fibers that will become my legs. Oh, and God. so I have like ten of them here, and lengthwise, it, it's golly, it, it's kind of hard to do and judge. It's just more more experience than anything else. You definitely don't want them too long, but about a half a hook shank in length. About like that, maybe a little, little shorter. Some and people need the... legs on their pheasant tails. <laughs> feel they, you know, feel they need legs. Like less experienced anglers, is that what yeah, you're driving? At? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They think that it's important to have legs on their. Yeah, I know. Tails. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those. Like I said, it takes me about 20 minutes. To get them separated appropriately. Yeah, see, I'd be get... done by now. Yeah. I, I'd have my fly finished by now if I wasn't waiting for you. Okay, and then I'm going to come I back. Jo to... I can hear Joan giggling in the back. She, she's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and just snip that off, okay? So you go now. Oh, all right. So I'm just gonna wind. I'm just gonna wind this stuff, the the rest of my pheasant tail behind the bead. Sometimes I'll use hackle pliers with this because it gets a little short. Because I this is from a different pheasant tail that has shorter fibers but nice thick fibers. About three turns. And secure that behind the bead. Like so. And then, of course, I, since I don't need legs, I'm just going to cut all of this off. I don't need that crutch. <laughs> uh and I'll let you I'll let you tie in your peacock curl because I'm almost done, Tim. I, I don't really have much more. Oh, to okay. Do. Yeah, I got another another ten minutes or yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got all kinds of things to do. You're gonna put okay. in the antennae, the antennae and the <laughs> eyeballs and everything. <laughs> so with my peacock curl, I'm gonna 
snip off about an inch and a half. That tip is just super brittle. Tie it in on the near side of the hook. And if you can, I know this is a little kooky, but if you can get it so you have the, the flues pointed down, these green, when you wrap it, and again, I'm going to wrap behind my tying thread just to keep keep all those wraps really sandwiched together. One strand, huh? One strand, that's it. And again, if, if you if you can keep those green flues sticking out, you you get you still get a nice bushy body on the fly. Yeah, you missed a spot there. Uh, did I? <laughs> no. <laughs> I gotta gonna anchor it real well. I can probably yeah. see your fly better than you can, right? Because I'm looking at the. Or are you? Looking yeah, you're at looking the line, at the. Right? You're looking at the video screen. So I've got my peacock curl wrapped in. I is it Joan's birthday? It was uh, yesterday. Oh, Joan! Oh. Happy birthday! Thank you. So one of the things I I didn't do it there, but one of the things I can do to help protect that peacock curl is to put a layer of super glue down before I wrap it. Okay, that just mm -hmm. makes it a little more durable because there there is no wire going through here. There's there's no nothing. The tricky part with these legs is to get everything swept rearward and just get a wrap or two behind directly behind the bead. Okay. Should I keep on going? Yeah. So after I've got the legs swept back a little bit, I'm just going to bring my flash over and just a couple wraps right there, two or three. And then I snug them down. You can actually see that flash drop in behind the bead a little bit. But real important is to bring it back over, kind of double it over. Mm -hmm. And that way it cannot pull out, which I think is kind of a big deal. And then <clears throat> in terms of trimming it off, I, I'm not real concerned about it because it just lays back on itself and you really can't see it. Uh huh. And then yeah. a, um, if I can find my whip finish tool. Just a little back to front, four or five turn whip finish. Seat the knot well. Cut it off. And I do, just for durability, <clears throat> I always add uh, just a little drop of head cement back there on the thread wraps. And I, I, I think you can see it just, it makes, you know, nice little legs that stick out, little shimmery, mm -hmm. shiny wing case. Um, yeah, that's not a, not a bad, not a bad one. Yeah, for you, it's not bad. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I'm going to, I'll finish mine. I'm going to bring the thread over the bead. And I bring it right between those two um, pieces of wire that I had on the top, because I'm going to put some head cement on there, and that'll that'll secure that. Then I'm going to make sure I get all my my pheasant tail fibers, bring them over the bead, catch them, tie them in place, trim them. See, I'm a big bead hider. Roger Bird's waiting for me to cut my thread. Oh, what one of those almost popped out. I could tell. Did it really? Oh, it was close. Yeah. And then I'm going to bring that one, just one little strand of flash over the top, right down the middle to look like a split in the wing case. Oh, my. I... I used this fly when I was out in Wyoming last summer on the North Platte. Oh, 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 no. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Houston, we have a problem. I, I can fix it. 
I can fix it. <laughs> oh, I just lost. I just lost. I can, there's enough there. I'm just going to zoom in on mine a little bit more. Yeah, you do that. <laughs> oh, it crossed. Come on. I can't believe I did that. Oh, you were like one wrap away from done. I know. And that's never happened to me. So. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm going to pull this over the top, hold it in place, tie it down. I was able to salvage it. Got me shaking now, Flagler. <laughs> I usually have a pretty steady hand. All right. So there is my version. And, oh, my whip finisher is behind my background. Oh, no, there it is. Get in here. Love that 12 o thread. You can do whatever you want up front. Oops. Yeah, the the new new threads are like game changer as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. The 12 and the 16s are just amazing. Yeah. And for, for that thin to be that strong, it, it's just kind yeah. of inconceivable. I don't think I'd want to spin a dubbing loop with it, but <clears throat> for anything, you know, for normal trout fly, especially for dries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to switch back, good. Tom, to the, to uh, regular camera view. All right. Shoot? I'm going to put I'm going to put my um, my cheapo magnifier on there so people can see my fly a little better. Okay. Maybe we'll I'll stay on the fly view and then we can kind of yeah, have a direct the, direct comparison view so that people can. Give us a spin there, Vanna. Oops. So, so anyway, there they are. I wish I could tie with this thing, but it's like the fly is like right up against the the, the lens, magnifier. So like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's out. some issues with tying with a camera between you and the fly. Yep. I'm using a flashlight here, but it still doesn't. <laughs> it still doesn't work. <laughs> it may be a function of the camera. Anyway, there we I mean, are. Two different, two very different pheasant tails. Oh, and then I would put a uh, a small drop of um thin uv resin on top of this for obvious reasons because that wing case is not very is not going to be very uh not going to be very durable unless i do so i'm just going to put a little tiny drop on here and what I might actually do too is I might put head cement on the eye because I hate getting epoxy in the eye of my fly because you never you, get it out. Weren't you earlier giving me grief about using glue? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Well, on this one, you really have to. I think I used one one drop of head cement on mine. Is that right? 
Yeah. You use super glue. I didn't though. <laughs> I usually yeah, but you do. You said you normally do. I know. Yeah. I know. So there it is now. And that doesn't it doesn't it doesn't give you a hump like it would on a copper john. You know, it's not a big not a big glop on there, just enough to secure that wing case. Looks good. So are we ready to see the poll results? Oh, uh, is I it? Am. I'm, ready. I'm ready to see the, is, is the see voting the in results? already. I guess so. Wow, that was quick. I guess so. Well, they hit Julia. Julia found a way to. Uh, Julia found a way to um, do it. Do it on the right on the program. So yeah, let's see the poll results. So nervous, I am too. But I, I, I don't think I, I don't think I have a chance with that with that uh, wing case deal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> happens to everybody, Tom. <laughs> you know, I tied a, I tied like a dozen of these this morning. I got up early to practice, and I, it never hit once happened to me. <laughs> Really? I haven't tied oh one of these. My things. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Wow! Oh man, I am giving up. All right, you guys, you guys <laughs> like Flagler better. You get him to do Facebook Live. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. I I can't even get fifty percent. I can't even get forty percent. Twenty three percent. I think the numbers are about to change, Tom. Why is well, that? Maybe not. <laughs> huh? I thought the numbers were about to change, but they're kind of staying no. the same. I think that I think that is um, I think that is very fair. And Tim, you tied a beautiful fly. So did you, Tom? And it was re it was really fun. It was really fun uh, tying side by side with you. Yeah, I've never done anything like that before. You know that that's no. that's interesting. No. Um, yeah. And and a great way to show that there there's more than one way to do the exact pretty much the exact same thing. And, and there mm, kind of yeah. is no right or wrong. And um, you know when, when I'm doing time classes and things like that, I, I try to express that to people that that it depends on where you are in terms of fly tying um, materials that you have, a whole bunch of things. And if if you can get it done that that's the right way for you um and right and, yeah you know it, it just doesn't have to be this way and um or as far as i'm concerned anyway just whatever you can do well congratulations tim oh elbow bump. <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah little <laughs> little covid19 fist bump or yeah. elbow yeah. bump elbow um, bump do we do we have any uh do we have any last questions julia um, before we before we go, I think everybody's left, Tom. Yeah, I think they're I probably think out fishing. They probably are. I would be if I didn't have to do this. Actually, <laughs> I'm gonna go. Look, I'm gonna go look for morels. We have we found a big haul of black morels yesterday, which we don't use really black black morels, and we found a new spot that's been pretty pretty good to us. So, wow. Yeah, it's Dave Hall, let's go fishing now. Okay. Josh, yes. Part two should be using the flies in a fish off. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it'd be a little tough to do on Facebook Live though. Yeah. Yeah. Where I fish, there's no there's no service of any kind. <laughs> and there's no people either. What a good color bead for bluegill on this. Oh God, bright. Yeah, bright. pink pink or orange or you know gold would probably work too yeah but i and i wouldn't or eli i wouldn't um i wouldn't tie pheasant tails for bluegills because they're so um these, this fly is, is so um fragile pretty fragile i would you know tie something like a hair's ear just a fur-bodied nymph you don't you don't need to go this fancy for a for a bluegill for, for a bluegill yeah they yeah. when when they have a mind to eat they're gonna eat anything yeah, they are fun to, to catch on nymphs, but I, you know, I don't think you need to use your pheasant tails on bluegill. 
And, you know, uh, an orange bead or a pink bead might be good for trout, too. You got anybody else? And uh, I'm going to remind people to come back at 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight to color a trout with Tim Johnson. Um, we had Tim Johnson drawing a trout with people on Facebook Live, showing people how to draw a trout. And then um, a couple weeks ago, and then this week, he's going to show people how to color it in. So it should be a lot of fun. Oh, cool. Tom, why no legs? Oh, so, John, there's a there's a couple of reasons why no legs. And, and it's the same reason that Frank Sawyer, who developed the original pheasant tail nymph, didn't put legs on his fly. Number one is the skinny little nymphs that you imitate with this. Um, they tuck their legs under their body and their legs are very insignificant. It's not like a stonefly or a March brown where the legs are really robust. The legs are their legs are really small. On these on these smaller mayflies, so they really don't show. You know, if you're not going to tie, put put in eyes and antennae, then you don't really need legs. And the other thing is that the legs retard the sink rate. It, this fly is going to sink better uh, if it doesn't have legs sticking out because they act like outriggers and they slow the descent of the fly. So two reasons. Um, one is you probably don't need them, and the other one is it sinks better. <clears throat> You two are my fly fishing mentors. Thanks for all you have contributed. Well, Brandon, thank you. Thank That's you. Very, very kind of you. Very kind of you. Is a zebra midge a good dropper on these? Absolutely. Yep, it is when it is. Yeah. And it isn't I, when it isn't. <laughs> I, I love zebra midges. That is, yeah. that is, man. I, I said it in that, that other video that I did uh, on YouTube today, the size 18 pheasant tail uh weightless is one that i always have and and black zebra midges in 22 and 24 is the other one it, it, they're just universal doesn't matter where you are what time of year they they just work all right well thank you everyone for tuning yes, in yes thanks guys we hope we hope you provided we hope we provided you with some entertainment today that's that was our purpose here to, to give you a little joy in your life and watch a couple of clowns uh, tie flies on on instagram i hope you learned something and uh, you know remember to keep the legs off your pheasant tails because oh you don't man need them. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going to be next time tom size 24 parachute atoms you think yeah yeah let's yeah. do that Tim. you won't even see it in my vice <laughs> in this camera <laughs> All righty, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That was fun. Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go oh, away. Oh, okay. Wait till it, wait till it, uh,